Hello, my name is Martins, and today I'm going to be talking about my blog post, Pragmatic Introduction to Machine Learning for DevOps Engineers. I've been working as a DevOps engineer for the last few years, and when I first started looking at machine learning, it was difficult to know where to start and where to focus. My aim today is to demonstrate how to solve a simple machine learning problem and hopefully demystify some of the impressions you may have around machine learning. Now, machine learning is a hot topic these days. You only need to look at search trends like this one, showing how searches for machine learning eclipsed searches for big data back in May 2017. And this one, showing the growth of terms like artificial intelligence, deep learning, and data science on the same graph. How did this happen? DeepMind's success with AlphaGo early in 2016 really brought machine learning to the attention of the wider community of the world at large. But that didn't happen overnight. It's a success that followed a long preamble that includes recent advances in three key areas. Hardware, particularly GPUs, because GPUs are ideally suited to the vector and matrix-based mathematics usually required in machine learning. Data, due to the accessibility of larger and larger data sets, and research breakthroughs in deep learning, like those described in Krzyzewski, Sitzkiewicz, and Hinton's landmark paper. In that paper, the researchers discuss how they use convolutional neural networks with GPUs to achieve stunning results with a well-known ImageNet classification challenge. So the bottom line is, it's not just hype. And as IT engineers, it's well worth our while to gain a better understanding of machine learning. In a separate talk, I will discuss how incisive these will really be for businesses. But for today, I will focus on the technical side from an introductory perspective. Now, the field can seem pretty daunting to a newcomer because of all the math, statistics, and algorithms involved. Even popular online courses don't really dispel this impression because they are typically aimed at aspiring data scientists rather than engineers. And let's be clear, there is certainly plenty of math and statistics involved. But if you're a software developer or DevOps engineer who just wants to get an understanding of machine learning technologies and processes without going down all the rabbit holes, what should you do? The good news is that getting a flavor of what machine learning is capable of is not as difficult as it seems. My goal today will be to help demystify machine, machine learning just a little. But before we get to the good stuff, let's take a quick look at some of the common machine learning areas. I'll try to keep it short. Machine learning can be divided into two broad areas, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning involves learning without the guidance of known labels or targets. Clustering is a common unsupervised learning approach. The majority of machine learning approaches, at least currently, fall under supervised learning or semi-supervised learning. In this case, we usually already have labels assigned to the data. Algorithmically, we can think of supervised learning as involving input variables, x, that produce an output variable, y, via a specific function, y equals f of x. Classification is a type of supervised learning task. In this task, there are discrete known categories to which data, uh, data instance can belong. The well-known MNIST challenge is an image classification problem of this kind because the algorithm has to decide which of the 10 numerical digit categories, that is 0 to 9, a particular image belongs to. Not all supervised learning problems aim to predict discrete categories. When the target is a continuous value, regression would be a more suitable approach. Now, some of you may be asking, what about deep learning? Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that can also encompass both supervised and unsupervised learning. It typically performs feature learning and involves neural networks. Deep learning and its associated frameworks is more difficult to get to grips with than what we will be looking at today. 
when you look at the process flow involved in common supervised machine learning, it is actually really quite simple. We train the algorithm on a set of data to create a model that allows us to make a prediction when presented with a new instance of data. This is really important because if you understand this basic process, then many supervised machine learning problems will seem familiar. Each of these processes, therefore, have just three main components. For example, in the training process, we have our data, or rather, the representations of data that we will present to the machine learning process. This is an important distinction, although something we won't dwell on today. If you hear the phrase feature engineering, this is what I was talking about. The final component is the model, which is what we want to create to help make our predictions. So in the middle, this is where the magic happens, the training process. The training process takes the data representations, learns from them, and builds a predictive model of that data. This is what is then used during any subsequent prediction phase. The problem we are going to use for our demonstration purpose today is a classification challenge. Can you predict the type of log, i.e., whether it's a system log, a Wi-Fi log, etc., based on looking at just one new line from a log? To do that, we're going to train our machine learning process on logs from your laptop and then use a percentage of those not used for training to see if we can make correct predictions. To solve this problem, my aim is to demonstrate it today by using simple tools and data that you already have. In other words, as few non-standard libraries as possible and nothing too abstract. We are going to use the Python machine learning library scikit-learn as a machine learning framework and the NumPy library for other numerical operations. Python has been the data scientist's friend for a long time. It has excellent math, science, machine learning, data frames, and graph support in the shape of NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, Pandas, Matplotlib, and many others. You may also have heard of TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Theno. We will not be using any of these deep learning frameworks, partly because Scikit-Learn makes it really easy for us to get started and partly because we don't need to use GPUs or leverage the additional power that comes with these other frameworks. So let's start. First, we need some data. As promised, I'm going to use system logs from my laptop, since that is readily available to me, and hopefully to many of you. But you can use any available logs, Apache, Tomcat, System, Docker, whatever you have to hand. To train our model, we will use a set of training data, and to test how well the resulting model generalizes to other data, we will use a smaller set of test data. So let's go ahead and create a local data directory for each data set. And then next, we'll grab some logs with at least 10k of data, but there is enough to train on. And these will then be divided between training and test data to a ratio of 10 to 1. So, Let's assume we've done that. Let's see how we did with that. Hopefully you got something in that ratio, and that's not too bad. We can work with that. Now next, you'll want to make sure you have a recent version of Python 2.7 installed, and you will also need Python pip. With those in place, we can simply do pip install numpy and sklearn. This will install the scikit-learn and numpy Python libraries that we are going to use. And then, of course, we are going to write the script. While writing the script, we will see that more than half of the script is bread and butter for any developer or DevOps engineer. Only a small core part of the script deals with the actual machine learning process. And what's more, in many cases, this core pattern is very similar among scripts solving very different machine learning problems. Scikit-learn, in fact, makes it really easy for us to abstract this away. So, if you understand this script, chances are you will be able to identify key parts of many other supervised learning, machine learning scripts as well. Let's add some boilerplate for input parameters, our data directories. We won't dwell on this. 
we'll just move on. Next, we're going to read the logs into two box standard Python arrays or lists wrapped by a dictionary. One list for training logs and one for testing logs. We could have used pandas data frames or numpy arrays for the same purpose, but we want to see how far we get without adding any new libraries. So if we imagine creating a log collection through function calls like the following, we can then go and implement our function. We should perform three tasks. Glop the log files in the corresponding data directory, extract the text data from each log file, line by line, and read it into an array. And thirdly, identify the log source type, also for each line, and set that into a second array. We differentiate data from type by indexing each dictionary with corresponding keys, one called data and one called type. Don't worry if you can't read all the detail. You can download the repo from GitHub later to take a look. Believe it or not, we're pretty much done with the hardest part, namely preparing our data and formulating the corresponding data structures. Well, just about. We need to prepare the data representation, something known as feature engineering. And we will get back to this shortly. Note that, depending on the nature of the data, there are several additional steps we might take to prepare the data. For instance, we might need to normalize or standardize the data or cater for categorical data by creating what is called one-hot dummies or some other technique. We may also wish to get rid of obvious outliers that could skew the model and remove entries with empty fields. In our case, largely for the sake of brevity, we've taken a punt that we can get results without spending too much time on preparing the data, other than removing empty lines. Much of the rest actually turns out to be quite formulaic. We are going to create a model by using an algorithm to find a good fit for the training data, and then make new predictions based on our test data. But first, what is a model? In everyday terms, a model is a simplified version of reality. In machine learning, this concept is no different. A model is a simplification of a complex data reality. We create this model by trying to fit our data, the text log data, with a suitable algorithm capable of producing a result as close as possible to the real thing. The smaller the error between the data and the algorithm's prediction, the better the model is likely to be. The process of finding this approximation is called fitting. What constitutes a suitable algorithm and how the fitting process works is outside the scope of this talk. Most of that is hidden from view in the high-level way scikit-learn allows us to operate. And I will show you that scikit-learn also makes it trivial to experiment with a range of algorithms and then to choose the one that suits your purpose. First, we need a training function. Our training function, let's call it train, requires three elements, the algorithm, and we're going to start by using naive Bayes multinomial, which is simple and fast. Secondly, the feature data, x, which is the log data array in our log collection dictionary. And then thirdly, the target data, y, which is the log type array in our log collection dictionary. Now, if you're wondering why or how we chose naive Bayes multinomial, the short answer is it doesn't really matter at this stage. We're simply picking any algorithm that we trust will give us results, and that has shown to be fast and convenient in the past. The longer answer is that naive Bayes has a long-standing association with text categorization, our use case, and the multinomial variation is often used for document classification. So we know that it is a reasonable choice. If we do our job properly, we should be able to derive a model with the following function call, which in our example translates to the following below. So let's see how we go. This is our implementation. You'll notice a few new objects, the pipeline, count vectorizer, and tfdf transformers. This is where our feature engineering comes in. It's because we need to be mindful of the fact that our feature data, the log data, is text, whereas algorithms usually require numerical input data as either a vector, matrix, or tensor. 
and n-dimensional numerical array. So we will need a way to convert our text into an n-dimensional array of numbers that the algorithm can accept as input. Without digressing too much, scikit-learn comes with a handy set of tools to do just that. Extracting features from text and turning them into numbers, available from sklearn, feature extraction, text. So for our use case, the best practice is to first convert the text documents, the logs, into a matrix of token counts using count vectorizer, and then to use what is called a term frequency transformer, such as t f transformer, to optimize the resulting data. Feel free to dig into those, but the essential thing to know is that they allow us to convert our text into the performed numbers matrix. Finally, we chain these transformations together with the algorithm using scikit-learn's handy pipeline utility. And that's it. We've now satisfied our first process, the training process. For predictions, recall that the prediction flow is actually like this. The prediction process actually is even easier. We'll use one of our test logs to make a prediction. And that gives us the following prediction. OK, so that log line is predicted to be from hawkcaptured.log. And a quick check in the actual log file would verify that that is, in fact, correct. But what if I wanted to know the percentage of predictions that are correct? In other words, how accurate my model is? We can use NumPy's mean function to compare the predictions about the test logs with the actual known log types. And that will look more or less as follows. Could we improve on this if we used a different algorithm? To see what different algorithms give us, let's quickly refactor our process with a couple of helper functions, predict and report. We then simplify the core flow so that we can add a list of algorithms to test out. All that's left to do then is to fill out our algorithms list with a selection with which we would like to experiment. We can choose classifiers from the scikit-learn documentation, but be aware that while most algorithms are fast, a few take a bit longer to run. Let's try out a few. Running this list with our optimizations, we get the following results. So, it turns out that among these, the linear SVC algorithm gives us the best results for a particular use case. Note that the type of feature data and how the features relate to the target prediction will play a significant role in deciding which algorithm is best suited. During test runs, the neural network MLP classifier showed even better results, although it is very slow to run. The code is up on GitHub at github.com slash martinsl slash log dash classifier. So feel free to download it and give it a try. Thank you for watching. I hope that this has given you a flavor of what a machine learning process looks like and how a supervised learning task like classification can be implemented using very few building blocks, Python, scikit-learn, and NumPy and of course, some locally available logs. If you have any questions or thoughts, then please send through a comment below. And remember, you can find all our other talks on our YouTube channel.